A few days ago, we released a tutorial video on a technique to dig subsamples from time series data using the modulo function and helper columns to assist the, the sort tool. And I mentioned in that video that uh, one of the places where that technique is useful is when you're using data analysis tools that are limited. And I highlighted the, the Fourier transform tool as one of those. And so I thought I'd uh, just produce a follow-up using the Fourier transform tool and demonstrating how using that filtering technique can really improve the output of some of those data analysis tools. So what I have here is uh, some data from one of our tilt flow meters, uh, like the ones described in the 2018 sensor paper. And this is basically a pendulum hanging from the ceiling of a flooded cave. If we zoom in on the data here, so this is a, a system that empties directly into the ocean. And when the tide level is high, it dams up the system and you get these periods of zero flow. But then when the tide goes down again, the water that's in the cave rushes out into the ocean. And so what we have here is basically the tilt angle of this pendulum is a proxy for the water velocity as it heads out into the ocean. And this isn't usually the data that you would see this tool used on. Normally you do the Fourier transform on direct water level or head data, uh, but this is still a tidally driven system and uh, I just I like it because it's, this is again dirty real world data as opposed to the other examples you'll see where either they're using the tool on high resolution data from an oscilloscope so in the range of 10 to hundreds of kilohertz or even worse some of the demos are generating synthetic data by combining sine waves. And of course, if you give perfect data to the filter, it's going to give you a perfect result out. So those are those other demos are kind of unsatisfactory from the point of view of environmental science where, you know, you need to know, is this going to work on, on data from the real world? Anyway, we still, we have a, a fundamentally tide driven system. And if I go to the Wikipedia page on uh, theory of tides, there's this lovely image of a Fourier transform done on tidal data with that water level measurement that I was talking about. And the thing that's important about this is these frequencies form a, a very recognizable signature. Here we have the largest lunar semidiurnal constituent and the largest solar semidiurnal. And the solar is right on the two cycles per day line. Whereas the lunar uh, is just under two cycles per day because the, the moon is orbiting the earth in the same direction that it rotates. And so a given location on the surface takes about another 50 minutes or so to catch up to the moon. And so there's slightly lower than two cycles per day. And then there's the lunar elliptical. These form a trident. And when combined with the two diurnal signatures from the moon, this is a beautiful fingerprint for us to use to assess the quality of what we get out of running the Fourier transform. And that's really what this video is about. This isn't about tidal dynamics. It's about learning how to use the tool so that it's giving you results that are useful. So let's, let's just get right into it. Um, I'm going to start by copying my data. You never want to work on your original. And uh, our, our source data is at 15 minute intervals. So we're just going to use that as our starting point and see what we get out of the Fourier transform tool. Now the, the tool has limitations. The most important one is that it will only accept power of two data samples. And so 246 up to 512, 248, and the maximum it will take is 4096. So I'm going to use that number as uh, the number of samples we're going to feed into the tool. To determine that, we just need to add the record number. And so one, two, three, four. If I click on the square in the lower right hand corner, it'll fill down. And uh, I can just scroll down until I find 4,000 records. OK, so there's the limit of the data the Fourier tool will take. So Control Shift Home. Control C, and I'll just copy that out to a new sheet. Okay, so now we have the right number of records for the tool. The other thing that's actually quite important is to make sure that the data is continuous. So when you do this copy, there can't be any gaps. If you have any missing data points, then the, the Fourier tool will throw errors that are very hard to understand. So 
It's got to be continuous. 4,096 is the largest number it will take. So now we'll just run the Fourier tool on that uh, raw data. Now you only have this tool available if you've installed the data analysis tool pack, which is free to download. There's plenty of instructions out there. I'm just going to take that as red. So data, data analysis, and Fourier. So the first thing that we have to do is select our input data range. I usually, because we've only got 4,000, I usually just click and drag to do that. So that takes us down to line 4107. And we need to now select the output. And you only have to select the first cell. It'll fill down from there. So there we are. Input range is the raw data. Output range, I've just selected the first cell. I hit OK. And it produces a, a complex number, so a real component plus an imaginary component. And uh, Excel exports these with 15 digits. So it's an enormous mess here on the spreadsheet. But when we fill the next column, that'll be hidden from us. So then to graph the Fourier output, we need to have the frequency along the x-axis. But we have to calculate what that is. And the easiest way to calculate that is to just take the total time for your entire record. And uh, if we're talking about cycles per day as our frequency, you want this in days. And, and this is one of those rare cases where Excel's decimal day format actually works to your advantage. I know a lot of people are not really thrilled about that format. It's, it has its issues. In this particular case, we just need to subtract the oldest timestamp from the youngest, and that'll give us a delta. So equals a4107 minus a12. So we got 42.65 days in our sample, and that information lets us calculate our frequency, which is the record number divided by that total time. So E12 divided by, and you want this to be a fixed reference, dollar sign G, dollar sign 5. And once again, if I click on the little green square, it'll fill down. So that's our frequency, but we can't graph these two immediately because there's no way to graph the uh, imaginary numbers. We have to take the magnitude of the combination. So we use a tool called IMABS to take the absolute value of the Fourier output. And we're going to multiply that by a scaling factor so that um, we can intercompare these results with uh, a Fourier transform ran on a different sample size, like 2046 or 512. You get different power values. So this is how we scale to compensate for the number of samples we're using. So this is the magnitude that we will put on our graph. So equals IMABS. Our Fourier is in the F column and 4096. Okay, so that's our absolute magnitude. And again, we'll just copy that down. And since we've uh, pasted this into a new sheet, the range matches the data size. Shift Control N. There's my two columns selected. Insert, scatter plot with lines, and there's our first Fourier output using 15 minute data, which equals 96 samples per day. And the first record is always extremely large. What we're after is uh, the records on the next couple of days, so we're going to just format this axis so we can read it. And the Fourier transform tool produces two mirror image copies of the same data. So none of the records uh, above 48 cycles per day here are valid. They're just duplicate data. So we can format our axis. In fact, I'm going to bring this down to, down to four. So we can look at the title data. And th the results of this application of the Fourier transform are are pretty bad. I mean, this is not what I was expecting to see. I mean, if you know what you're looking for, you can see that there's one, two, three. We got three points there in this result, but 
they're 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 so so blurred together that this is pretty much non-functional. As with these two um, diurnal peaks from the moon, again, they're, they're they're almost invisible here. They've just been smooshed together. So this is a completely unsatisfactory result. And I was surprised by this. I'm so used to dealing with time series data where more records per given unit time means better output that I was I, I, I was taken aback until I dug a little deeper into that information on tides and I realized that the frequency of the resolution of a Fourier transform is inversely proportional to the sampling rate. And so if I just do a rough calculation here of what our frequency resolution from the Fourier transform is, we end up with equals 1 divided by 4096 divided by 96. So we can't resolve anything closer if we if we feed 15 minute data into the Fourier transform we can't resolve anything that is closer than 0 0.02 cycles per day together and these peaks are are reasonably close together they're within that tolerance so if i redo this calculation but i change the samples per day down to say 24 I'm able to resolve signals that are much closer together. So the, on the frequency axis, having fewer samples per day gives you higher resolution. Again, this was non-intuitive to me. I was so used to working with the time series data that it, it took me a moment to really understand the implications of this frequency resolution. So let's go back to our original data set. And we're going to subsample that fairly aggressively, let's say to two hour interval. And then once we've done that, we'll run the Fourier transform on that vastly reduced data set and see the results of the transform there. So there's my raw data again. I'm just going to make a copy. Okay, so to subsample below an hour, we need to use two helper columns. In the uh, tutorial we posted a few days ago, I was using just mod minute, and uh, we're actually going to use mod hour in this case. So I'll add another helper column. So mod hour on our timestamp, which is in the A column, and we're going to select for the two hour. We're going to use two as our divisor. And the equals zero conditional, we'll turn that into a true false result. And if I take this formula, mod hour divide by two equals zero, and I copy that down, you can see that we get blocks of true false. So this is where we have even and odd. Basically, here's the evens, they're all true. Odds, all false. Evens, divide by two equals true. So we're going to need another helper column to do our two-hour subsampling. I'll just insert that here. Equals mod minute. And we're going to divide that by 60 minutes. And that'll give us a hit on each hour. So equals zero. And if I copy that down, you can see that that's only true on the hour, which is exactly what we would expect. But the interesting thing is when you take a look at where this helper column aligns with the first one, we only get a set of trues on every second hour. On the odd hours, it doesn't align. So here's our alignment, doesn't align, and then at the four, we get another alignment. So now we have enough data to filter so that we can subselect only the two hour data from this original data set. So let's do that. I'll just control shift end. There's our data selected and we'll run a sort on it. So the first column we're going to use is the B column. And largest to smallest, we'll move the trues to the top. Add another level. The C column, same as before, largest to smallest, so the trues line up. And then the third column that we'll use is our timestamp column, and we'll 
keep the oldest to newest format of the record. And when we do that, you can see that only the cases where both were true have risen to the top of the data set. And if I scroll down, all right, there's our, there's our breakpoint where we've reached the end of the matches to our sort criteria. I'll just click on the lower right corner, control shift home, control C, just copy it, make a new sheet, control V. So we've just pasted that in. We don't need the helper columns anymore, uh, but we still need to sub-select 4,096 records. So let's put a record number on there. One, two, three, four. Right click to fill down, and then we scroll down till we find the 4,096. There we are, there's our last record. So control shift home, control C. And I'll just pop that on another sheet. So here's our uh, two hour data subselected to 4,096 records. And now we can run our, our Fourier transform on it. So again, data tab, data analysis, free analysis. And since we, we just ran this tool, it's already selecting uh, the right columns. So I can just hit enter. And it's transformed this raw data into real and imaginary components. Uh, the next step is to figure out what the frequency is to display on the x-axis. And just like before, we need to know the total time. All right. And that's the last timestamp minus the, the, the oldest one in this record. So equals a 4107 minus a 12. So this record uh, spans 341 days. Our frequency calculation is the record number divided by that total time. So E12 divided by dollar sign G. And right click, or sorry, rather just click on that lower square to paste down. So there's our frequency axis, and we still need to determine the magnitude of the Fourier output. And again, we're using the same formula with our compensation factor. Okay. So IMAB's F12, which was the column containing our Fourier output, times 2 divided by 4096. All right, so there's our magnitude. And if I just control shift end, there's our two columns selected for the graph. Insert scatter plot with lines. Now this was uh, subsam subsampled to two hour. And that means we have only 12 samples per day. And you can see that in the uh, x-axis here. We're only going from 0 to 12. But again, uh, Nyquist comes into play. Only we, With 12 samples per day, we can even resolve a frequency below half of that sampling rate. And so everything above 6 down here on the axis is just the duplication of the Fourier data. So control C, control V, there's a copy. I'm just gonna change the axis here. Change that to 20 so we can see the height of the peaks a bit better. And nothing above six is valid. In fact, I'm gonna change this bound to four. 
Okay. And now we're, we're seeing a very different picture. If I go out to that uh, reference image that we were looking at from the, the theory of tides information, and I just paste it into place here, it's clear that we are we are doing a much better job of resolving the frequencies of the tidal influence. You know, you can clearly see the M2 peak. There's S2, N2, and then those those two uh, lunar diurnals very clearly resolved. And if I if I just roll the mouse over the peak here, it says the frequency at that point is 1.936. Uh, if I go back to my reference data the actual frequency for M2 is 1.932. So we're not far off. Um, you know, obviously we still have some issues. I could probably subsample this data further to get that frequency alignment much better. So we could, we could even probably get down well below 1% error on this. But the point here is that by subsampling our data more aggressively, we got much better results out of the Fourier transform tool. And that's really what this whole exercise was about, is this realization that fewer samples per day gives you much better quality output when you're using the Fourier transform tool in Excel. With the, the caveat here that there's a balancing point, you can only resolve phenomena at the Nyquist frequency. So if you went down to six samples per day, you would not be able to resolve the, uh, the higher peaks up here at four per day. These peaks would not be resolvable because you would have fallen below half of your sampling rate. And so there's, there's a balancing act. To, you, wanna, you wanna subsample as aggressively as you can while still having enough samples per day that your fold frequency is higher than the frequency of the phenomena that you're looking for.